Good morning. Uh, so this video is for anybody who has a Linux furnace system set up with the iComfort or iStat, not quite sure exactly what it's called, thermostat. It looks something like this. Um, it just looks like any regular thermostat. It doesn't do anything special for this furnace specifically. Um, I called the local uh, HVAC, um, HVAC company and they said that if you had like a special board on the um, AC unit outside that it would have to have like a Wi-Fi connection to speak directly to the furnace um, through the thermostat. They said I didn't have that connection so I could swap this thing out for the new Google Nest um, learning thermostat, which we did um, and I was super excited for. Um, the main reason why we wanted to go with the switch was because over the past month or so, we've been having this on this thermostat, the Linux, it was having a completely whited out screen. Uh, you couldn't touch it. I mean, if you touched it, nothing would happen. It was just like a blank screen. And it have hash marks going up and down, almost like somebody punched it or if it was damaged by something. Um, but we didn't do anything to it. And it's, you know, occasionally it would go back to its regular screen and come and go back to like the damaged look. And we just, we were kind of fed up with it because we couldn't use our phones with this. This isn't very much of a smart device. So we couldn't adjust the heat cooling through our phones or any type of um, scheduling or anything like that. So we're just like, let's just trash it. So we ended up going with the fourth generation Google Nest, the learning one. And it's really nice. Um, the only caveat to this was the setup. So what I will show you, and this is obviously from somebody who <coughs> does not work on uh, furnaces, AC units, this is just stuff I found on YouTube and stuff I found to be helpful without calling back the HVAC company to kind of do it for me. So, all right, and then this together is my Linux furnace. Um, here is the outside panel and here's the inside panel. This inside panel was held in by, I used a quarter inch driver to take off two of the different screws that were in there. There's a little window that will show you different codes on the board if you're reading anything. Um, any error codes or any type of heating cycle that it's on specifically. Here are the different error codes that you could find or normal codes that will be like corresponding to H if it's just the heat stage that it's in or if it's A if it's the idle mode that it's in. So all that's good stuff to know. Um, the code will show up on this little thing right here. It will blink red and you'll find that very obviously when it's turned on, which this is not. Okay, to the wiring guide, which is something that I couldn't figure out online through any type of tutorial with the video or through any type of forum, was how to have my Nest thermostat work on a Linux system. Well, what they do on a Linux system is they use the secondary part of the board over here. I don't know what to call it. But there's an orientation where there is a R, I plus I negative C for an outdoor system. And there's the same orientation for indoor system. Mine was hooked up to the indoor system. It was like orientation was red, white, blue, green, you know? And so I moved it over to this portion of the board. And you know what? That worked. But what I did have to find out was how to get heating to work. And then I had to do a little bit more research. Found out that W1, W2 is for heating. Y1, Y2 is for cooling. And G is for the fan. C is the common that would usually have <clears throat> just regular current going to the unit itself upstairs, so the thermostat, to just give it a little bit of a charge so that way if it loses power, if we lose power throughout the house or if there's lack of power going to the thermostat itself, then it would still have a little bit of charge left. Uh, not super important, but I guess we have it, so I'll use it. And then the R is essentially like the load, so that brings the, the power from the system here. Anyways, <clears throat> so I had to do a little bit of trial and error, but it wasn't too complicated because I figured all that we really need was heating and cooling. We don't need anything fancy. We don't need a secondary heating or cooling system, which it would be the Y1 and W2, or I'm sorry, Y2, W2. <clears throat> we don't need a fan, so we don't have that hooked up. And yeah, so this is the orientation I used and it worked great. Um, it heats, it cools. We are in December now. So it's pretty cold, so I haven't tried the AC function yet, but it heats up perfectly, and yeah. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that I didn't know that you have to change the orientation from 
the Linux system because it likes this orientation over here to over here. And that's all you got to do. So I wouldn't say play around with it. I don't like to use that term loosely, but this is what I did. And I didn't want to pay the $80 to $100 to have somebody else do it for me. So, and it worked. So if I'm wrong with this orientation, if somebody says, hey, this is going to burn out something on your furnace, please let me know in the comment section or let me know if there is a better orientation for these wires so that I can prolong the life of this furnace because I know they're expensive. Anyways, guys, hope this helps somebody out there because it seemed to help me for now. Thanks. Have a good day.